there! In our previous video, we talked about typhoons, how they develop, and how they are affected by land masses and bodies of water. In this video, we are going to talk about the Philippine Area of Responsibility, or PAR for short, and how to track typhoons using a map and track data. By the way, if you still haven't watched the previous topic, you can pause this video and watch that one first so you can better understand our topic today. The Philippine Area of Responsibility is the smallest and innermost monitoring domain whose boundary is closest to the Philippine Islands. The exact dimensions of this domain are the area of the Western North Pacific, bounded by imaginary lines connecting the coordinates first at 5 degrees north and 115 degrees east, 15 degrees north and 115 degrees east, 21 degrees north and 120 degrees east, 25 degrees north and 135 degrees east, and lastly, 5 degrees north and 135 degrees east. Now, what do these numbers mean? We have here a map of the Philippines. To know what these numbers mean, we need to learn what latitude and longitude is. Latitude refers to the geographic coordinates that determine the distance of a point north to south of the equator. On the other hand, longitude refers to the geographic coordinates that determine the distance of a point east to west of the prime meridian. Now that we understand what these mean, we're ready to plot these coordinates. If we plot the identified coordinates on the map, we will be able to determine the Philippine area of responsibility. So let's start plotting the coordinates. First, we have 5 degrees north and 115 degrees east, which is right here. Next, we have 15 degrees north and still 115 degrees east here. And 21 degrees north and 120 degrees east right here. Moving further north, we have 25 degrees, and further east, we have 135 degrees, which coincide here. And lastly, 5 degrees north, and still 135 degrees east here. Now that we have plotted the coordinates, let's connect these together. The region within the plotted points is called the Philippine Area of Responsibility. It is the job of the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical, and Astronomical Services Administration, or PAGASA for short, to monitor all tropical cyclones that enter this area. So let's try this example. If a typhoon is located at 15 degrees north and 139 degrees east, is it within the Philippine area of responsibility? 15 degrees north is right here. However, 139 degrees east is not even within the Philippine area of responsibility. Thus, this typhoon hasn't entered or is not within the Philippine area of responsibility yet. Now, how about if the typhoon is at 19 degrees north and 117 degrees east. Is it within the par? 19 degrees north is here, and 117 degrees east is here. When we intersect these points, we can see that it is still outside the Philippine area of responsibility. Let's try tracking a sample typhoon. Inside the table are sample tracking data. Let's plot these coordinates to know the direction of the typhoon. Using the latitude and longitude in the table, we are able to track the location of the typhoon at a given time. In knowing this, we will be able to forecast if our location is in the path of the typhoon. 
Here are the tropical cyclone categories, so we will know when it's called a tropical depression, tropical storm, typhoon, or super typhoon. The stronger the tropical cyclone, the higher the category. The weaker it is, the lower the category. In a tropical depression, there will be maximum wind speed of 64 km per hour. In a tropical storm, there will be maximum wind speed of up to 118 km per hour. It will be categorized as a typhoon as it reaches a maximum wind speed of 200 km per hour. If the typhoon further intensifies, it will be called a super typhoon, just like the typhoon Yolanda. Now let's learn about the public storm warning signal system so we will know how strong a typhoon is. In signal number 1, winds of 30 to 60 km per hour may be expected in at least 36 hours. There may be no damage to very light damage to structures. So what should we do? Watch out for big waves and be updated if there's a severe weather bulletin issued by Pagasa. In signal number 2, winds of 61 to 120 km per hour may be expected in at least 24 hours. Light to moderate damage to structures may happen. And during this period, avoid riding in small sea craft. Those who travel by sea and air should avoid unnecessary risk. Postpone outdoor activities of children. In signal number 3, winds of 121 to 170 km per hour may be expected in at least 18 hours. Moderate to heavy damage is expected to structures. When on signal number 3, avoid riding in any sea craft. Seek shelter in strong buildings. Evacuate from low-lying areas and stay away from coast and riverbanks. In signal number 4, winds of 171 to 220 km per hour may be expected in at least 12 hours. Heavy to very heavy damage is expected to structures. Storm surge is expected to reach 2 to 3 meters in coastal areas, so residents are required to evacuate immediately. All travels and outdoor activities should be cancelled. The locality is very likely to be hit directly by the eye of the typhoon. Lastly, we have signal number 5, also called the super typhoon. Winds of more than 220 km per hour may be expected in at least 12 hours. Very heavy to widespread damage is expected to structures. Storm surge of more than 3 meters is expected in coastal areas. Residents in these areas hit by a typhoon should evacuate immediately if the storm is classified signal number 5, an example of which is a Typhoon Yolanda in 2013. Now let's wrap things up. The Philippine area of responsibility is the smallest and innermost monitoring domain whose boundary is closest to the Philippine Islands. The exact dimensions of this domain are the area of the Western North Pacific bounded by imaginary lines connecting the coordinates 5 degrees north and 115 degrees east, 15 degrees north and 115 degrees east, 21 degrees north and 120 degrees east, 25 degrees north and 135 degrees east, and 5 degrees north and 135 degrees east. That's all for now. In our next video, we will be discussing about comets, meteors, and asteroids. So stay tuned. See you on our next video, and don't forget to keep your minds busy. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification icon for more videos like this.